All right, so let's pick our path. So he's the guy that I want to actually start to animate, right? So what we're going to need to do is insert these keyframes. So I'm going to capture this keyframe at starting point zero, right? So the very first unit of time. And then I'm just going to drag this over to maybe the one second mark. I'm going to add in another keyframe. So now you can see that Blend captured the fact that, okay, you're going to do something between this second of time. What are you going to do? Well, now I can just tweak any of the properties I want. So if I want to actually reposition this guy, I could just drag him over here. Then I might say, okay, now let's go over here to the two second mark. Add another keyframe. And now maybe we'll move him down here. And then we'll finish it up by doing like a really slow fade over here. Right? So I've just inserted these different keyframes. Each one can be edited uniquely. So as soon as I click on one of these little keyframe holders, check out on the right hand side of the Blend IDE, I have this little easing area where I could kind of add in some effects to make it kind of arc up or slowly fade down. Right? Now once you kind of get each keyframe just the way you want it, you can see how things would look if you click on the play button. Right? So we can see that my little shape has moved along my little path. Okay. Now, when you're recording your keyframes, it doesn't have to only be for actual movement. Like maybe you might say, well, after I've moved to this location, I want to go over here and over the period of one second, maybe I want to change the um, the actual color of the. Uh, let's see, let's go here. I want to change the color of my path. Like maybe change the stroke make it go from red to green. Right? So I just selected the stroke property. I just changed the color. Now watch what happens here. So we're all still red. Now it's going to fade into green over time. Right? So don't think that it has to literally just be about moving something on the surface. You could have an animation that would change um, any property. right? So if I wanted to, again, maybe add in another keyframe here. And maybe I want to transform this guy. Let's see. Maybe I'll do a rotation. So at that point, I just want to kind of spin him around. So again, we'll see this animation taking place. Here's where we're going to change the color. And now we can spin around. So using this little animation editor, what I've basically done is I have written a whole bunch of markup. So if we were to take a peek here, we can see that a tool like Blend is actually now really helpful because it created this whole entire storyboard for me. And if any of you folks have tried to work with animations manually in Visual Studio, you're probably really happy because you know some of the syntax that we have to do in markup is pretty, pretty brutal. Right, to actually get all these different things set together with their target properties. And a tool like Blend will just get that all done for us. Right, so here's just kind of again the basic setup. Remember your ultimate goal is you are adding keyframes to your storyboard. And when we want to add keyframes, we just have this little add a keyframe button here. Remember that nice little F6 key that'll toggle the position of your editor vertically or horizontally. And then remember too, any property over here is a candidate to be animated. So if you want to change the transparency, you can just find that right here under the Appearance tab. And you can maybe have your control slowly fade from view over the period of four seconds. Oh, one other thing I'll point out too. Let's say that you've created this little storyboard. If you come back to Objects and Timelines, so here's my storyboard right here, right? Now, if you select it and you go look at your properties area, under common properties is where you could do things like set up the auto reverse and repeat behaviors. So here I just set it to auto reverse. So now I would see something like this happen. So now it's just going to go backwards, right? And bring us back to where we started. 
Now, if I were to actually run this, let me show you one other little interesting thing. So I'm just going to hit the F5 key to actually launch the window. You might wonder to yourself, geez, now how did that happen, right? I just started the program and Blend is already animating stuff. Well, the reason is that by default, when you are building up this little animation directly on your window, the storyboard that you're creating is going to automatically execute when your window is loaded into memory. And that is controlled over here with the triggers area. Now, I'm going to talk more about the triggers area when we get to that custom control section. But let me just point it out now briefly. Okay? So, the triggers area, well, let me just take a step backwards. Um, in the world of WPF, a trigger is a way for you to capture when a certain event condition is true or false. And then when it's true, you typically will take a course of action. Um, in many cases, that will be starting a storyboard. Now, if you're doing Silverlight, Silverlight has really limited support for triggers. Basically, all they have is a loaded trigger. But they have very similar functionality through something called the Visual State Manager. So if you're doing this demo using Silverlight, this is going to be a little different for you. But the same end result will still be there. So notice what I can do. Okay, by default, Blend is going to be capturing the window loaded trigger. So I'm just going to make sure I have him selected. And then notice what I can do down here. I can say, okay, well, what do I want to happen? Well, when the window is loaded, that's what we see up here, this is where I can pick my storyboard. So here's the storyboard that we just made. I could also make a new one here. And what do I want to do when it happens? Well, I want it to begin. Okay. Well, imagine that we don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to actually delete that completely. I want to add a whole different one. So I'm going to say when the window and also I can pick from all these different triggers here. So I might say the mouse has to go down on my window. So when that happens, then I'm going to go ahead here. I'm just going to grab my storyboard. Actually, I can make a new one here if I want to. I can begin that one. right? So what I'm basically able to do now is I'm able to selectively figure out some kind of a condition. So if I did want to begin this new storyboard, right, I could just come over here to my editor and just repeat the same thing that we just did. So I might uh, you know, move this guy around, maybe pick this path. I could start to add in my little keyframes, move this guy around. So now, if I were to run this guy, and I click down on my mouse, now it's going to animate. Okay? So the triggers area is a pretty neat aspect of working with the blend, and it's a pretty neat idea in WPF in general. Basically, you can kind of handle events without really handling an event. You're just responding to some condition being true or false.